Hello and welcome to lecture 32 on arc length. So this is yet another application of the integral and I'm going to draw a picture of what we're going to do. So let's say we have some curve, some continuous curve here. So I'll draw something like this. We'll label this y equals f of x. And then further, I'm going to mark a and b here. So we have this piece of the curve that we're interested in from A to B. And it goes like this. So we're going to follow it all along here. And the question is, um, how long is this piece of the curve? So if you imagine this blue part that I drew over it is a piece of string. If you placed this over the curve, and then maybe you picked the string up and you stretched it back out again, like you laid it straight on the table or something like this, you'd expect it to be a little longer than what it looks here, right? Because you'd take it in and stretch it out here. So what we're asking for is, what is the arc length, or how long is that piece of string that you need to basically sculpt out the curve? So I guess I'll write that, too, as a sentence for your notes. So what you can do is you can think of placing a string over a curve. And then the length of the, of the stretched out string, the stretched out string is our arc length. So this is the idea. I've swapped pens now, so hopefully this will write better. Um, the formula for finding this arc length is going to be as follows. So we have the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus the derivative of f of x squared. So that's all under the square root dx. So this gives the length of a curve, y equals f of x, from some a to some b, as long as the derivative of f is continuous. So this is the main formula we're going to be using. Um, in other parts of the video, we'll be um, using variations of this formula. And in le later lectures, you'll also see other variations of this formula, but they're all going to look very similar to this. Um, so this is the formula you'd want to know. And let's go ahead and apply it to an example over here. So we're going to find the length of the curve um, of the semi-cubical paraboloid, y squared equals x cubed, between these two points. So what does this look like? I thought I'd just draw you a picture as well. So it actually looks like this. This is called a semi-cubical paraboloid, and there's like a cusp that happens right here, but it's like mirrored on the top and the bottom. And we're interested in knowing the arc length from 1, 1 to 4, 8. So we could label those two points, and then what I'm going to find is what's the distance if I followed the curve? What's that length right there between those two points? So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to put my um, function here in terms of x because that's the only formula I have to work with right now. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to say, well, if y squared is x cubed, then I'm going to be working with y equals, well, if I take the square root of both sides, I get plus or minus x to the 3 halves. However, I'm only concerned with this upper portion. And also, even if I plug this um, a, a negative portion into the formula, I'm going to square it and get a positive anyway. I, it doesn't really matter, So, but, but really I am focusing on this top portion. So the one that I want to focus on is y equals the positive x to the 3 halves power. Okay, so now for the formula, what I need to do, let me write it out for us. We have the integral from, and these are going to be bounds for x, so my a to b will be 1 to 4. So the integral from 1 to 4, 
and then I have the square root of 1 plus, and in here I need to plug in the derivative with respect to x. So what is the derivative? What is dy dx? That's going to be 3 halves x to the 1 half. And that's what I'm going to plug in right here. And then, don't forget this part, you also have to square that in the formula as well. So you square this. And this all is housed inside the radical, and then you have dx. So then it boils down to, can you simplify this integrand enough so that you're able to integrate it? So let's keep going. So I have the integral from 1 to 4. This is the square root of 1 plus, if I square this, I get 9 over 4. And then it's just x, right? If I square x to the 1 half, I get x. Now this um, is not a nice integral, but I could make this a lot better if I make a u substitution, because this is just something linear in here. So let's make a u substitution. Let's say u is 1 plus 9 over 4x. Well, that would mean that du is 9 over 4 dx. And then further, that would mean that 4 ninths du is dx. So I'm going to make this substitution. I'm also just going to go ahead and take care of the bounds as well, because remember, these are at x right now. So if I want to change these and make these u, well, if I plug in 1 for x, it looks like I get 13 over 4. So that's if I plug in 1 right here. And then for the other bound, if I plug in 4, the 4 is canceled and I get 10. So this just ensures I don't have to go back and substitute back in for x again. Now let's change this integral. So u is what I've called the inside. So I have u to the 1 half power, which is much easier to integrate. And what else did I get? Well, this dx is also 4 over 9 du. So I also have a 4 over 9 out here du. So let's integrate this. If the integral of u to the 1 half power is u to the 3 halves power times 2 thirds. But I also have this 4 over 9 that was sitting here. And I need to evaluate this from 10 to 13 over 4. And now to get this, the exact length of this curve, I'd have to do some kind of simplification here. It doesn't look the, like the nicest, but we'll see how far I get. So the fraction in front is 8 over 27. And then you would plug in, you'd have 10 to the 3 halves minus 13 over 4 to the 3 halves just like that. Well, can I make this look any nicer? Um, sort of. If you have something to the 3 halves power, that's the same as 10 to the first power times 10 to the half power. So I could rewrite this as 10 root 10. And then this one, I could write this as 13 root 13 over, and then this would be 4 root 4. So anything to the 3 halves power, I can write it in that, that pattern. And then if I distribute this, I would get 80 over 27 root 10 minus, and an observation to make here is this is just 8. 4 times root 4, that's 8. It'll cancel with this 8. So if I, if I distribute this other part here, I get 8 times 13, which is 104. And this is root 13 um, over the, um, the 8. Um, times 27. Oh, I just realized, I just talked about the 8's canceling, and I didn't cancel the 8's. Um, the 8's cancel, don't they? So instead of this 104, let's just make that 13. That was very silly. So I have 13 root 13, and that's over 27. We still have that. So after I've distributed, that is the final answer. So this would give us the exact arc length from walking on the curve from here to this point right here. In the next part of this video, we're just going to do two more examples of arc length. I'm going to show you just a couple variations of this formula. I'll see you in just a moment. All right, so welcome back. So the first point I'd like to make is that we had the arc length formula in terms of x. However, you can switch the roles of x and y if you're given a curve that is in terms of y. And you can kind of just use a, a, a similar looking formula and also get the arc length. So you don't have to switch the variables all in terms of x for every problem. Um, so say they do give you a curve that is 
um, in terms of y, and you want to find the length of the curve from some c to d, where these are y values, then the formula will look like this. You'll have the integral from c to d of the square root of 1 plus g of y prime squared dy. So the whole integral is in terms of y, and you're just doing the same kind of thing. You have 1 plus, and then that function is derivative squared. So here's an example where they want to you to find the length of the curve, and they've given you the um, We've given you the curve in terms of y already. So let's apply this formula and do another practice problem. Um, I encourage you to pause the video and try it yourself if you feel confident doing so. So give that a shot. I'm going to go ahead and do it now. So first I'm going to need to find the derivative, but I need to clean this up a little bit. So this y is to the 1 half power. So if I were to distribute this in, I would get 1 third y to the 3 halves power, because I have 1 half, plus 1, minus, and then I'd get 1 third times 3 is 1, and I just get 1 y to the 1 half power. So there's my first step. Now I need to take the derivative because I need, I need this g prime of y to plug in. So the derivative of this is going to be 1 half y to the 1 half minus 1 half y to the negative 1 half. So you can check my coefficients and everything, but I brought the 3 halves down. And now I would have 1 half for that coefficient. And then similarly for the second part here. So I have all the pieces I need now to plug this into my formula. So let's go ahead and do that. I was told that my y values are going to go from 1 to 9. So I'm going to integrate from 1 to 9. I have 1 plus, and then I need to plug in my derivative squared. So this time, my derivative squared is 1 half y to the 1 half minus 1 half y to the negative 1 half, and this is all squared. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm actually going to be doing a FOIL problem. So let's go down here and do a little bit more work. This is 1 to 9, the integral of the square root. Here I'm going to FOIL this out so the 1 doesn't do anything. But here, if I FOIL this out, I multiply this by itself. So I'm going to get um, 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. I'll get 1 fourth, and then y to the 1 half times y to the 1 half is just y. Then I'm going to get 1 half times 1 half, and these are, this is subtraction. But I'm going to get two of these if I do my inner and my outer. So this would be a fourth, and another fourth would be minus 1 half. And then I'd have y to the 1 half times y to the negative 1 half, would, which would just be y to the 0. So as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about this. I'm actually going to write this out. So you can also verify if you want as you're, as you're taking your notes. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this thing and I'm multiplying it by itself. So this first term I got here was multiplying the first two. And then the second term here, I got negative 1 fourth and negative 1 fourth. And again, the y to the 1 half power and y to the negative 1 half power, it would be y to the 0 here. And I need one more term. So my last terms, if you multiply these, they're both negative. So I get a positive 1 fourth. And then this time, y to the negative 1 half times y to the negative 1 half is y to the negative 1. All right, I'm going to try to fit one more line down here. So this is the integral from 1 to 9. Um, it's getting a little bit scrunched up over here. Let me rewrite that. So this is the integral from 1 to 9. I'm just going to simplify a little bit right here. So I would have 1 fourth y. And then I would have 1 minus 1 half is plus 1 half. So I'm just combining these two constants. And then I have plus 1 fourth to the negative y. So unlike our last problem, where I could just make a simple u substitution, this is a lot harder to integrate. And there's not a nice u substitution. So often what happens with these problems is you're able to re-express this as a perfect square. So I'm going to show you what I mean. So notice that the trinomial I have in here can be rewritten as 1 half y to the 1 half plus 1 half y to the negative 1 half, all squared. 
So what I'm saying is that you can factor this into a perfect square. And this is what it is. It's this value squared. And now what happens is if you have a quantity squared and a radical, they cancel out. So we get the integral from 1 to 9. The radical and the square cancel. And this is 1 half y to the 1 half plus 1 half y to the negative 1 half. So that kind of saves us. So now we can actually integrate this and use the power rule backwards for both of these. Um, so luckily, we were able to rewrite this as a perfect square. And just be on the lookout for that. For these types of problems, that happens quite often. So just think about that. Now I'm going to integrate this. If I integrate y to the 1 half, I get y to the 3 halves. A 2 thirds would go out front. So actually, 1 third is going to be my new coefficient. And then for this one, I would have 1 half for the new power if I integrated. And then what needs to go here, it would be nothing, right? Because if I had the 1 half here and I took the derivative, I'd get the 1 half I started with. So this is integ integrated. And now I need to integrate from 9 to 1. So if I do that, the way I handle this is I plug in my 9. First, I do a square root, and then I'll cube it. That's the order I'll do this in. So plug in a 9. Square root of 9 is 3 to the third power is 27 divided by 3 is 9. I'll do it again here. This one's, this one's more straightforward. Plug in a 9 here. The square root of 9 is 3, and that's it. Then we do minus and put a big parenthesis, and we're going to plug in 1. 1 to any power is 1. So this first one is a third, and this is plus 1. So what I end up getting is I get 12 minus 4 thirds, but then this is just 32 thirds. And that is the exact length of this curve from y equals 1 to y equals 9. So definitely a lot of algebra things that could go wrong with these problems, but um, once you practice enough of them, uh, you'll start to see a pattern. I want to take a look at this last example. So suppose you have a smooth curve C, and it has some equation y equals f of x, and it's on this interval. So what we can do instead of finding the exact arc length of just between two points, we can set up a function that will give us the arc length starting at a to any point we pick in this interval. So we're, we're able to create a function that we can just plug in values now and get the arc length for different x values. So it's actually a lot more handy um, and a lot more flexible than what we've been doing earlier. So the formula for this, it's also very similar to the, the two equations we've been working with. It's s of x is the integral from a to x, square root of 1 plus f prime t squared dt. So t is just a parameter that we're plugging into the function that was a function of x. And this is going to help us keep track of where we are along the interval a to b. So when you compute um, answers for this, you're not going to give me a value. You're going to give me a function that represents any number I want to plug in as my, my endpoint for the curve. And your, um, the start, starting point of the curve is always going to be this a. So let's take a look at this, at this example. We'll find the arc length of the function x squared minus 1 eighth ln of y. And we're gonna, they always need to specify where the, it's going to start from. You need that anchor point for this scenario. So this is going to be considered my a. My a is going to be 1. That's where it wants the function to start. And then from there, we just have to give an x variable for whatever, whatever endpoint we choose. All right, so I'm going to show you the calculations for this. So first, I'd like to write out what f of t is. All that is, you plug t into the, into the function. So f of t is you replace the function with t's. So this is t squared minus 1 eighth ln of t. And the formula doesn't call for f of t. It calls for the derivative of it. So the derivative of this function with respect to t is 2t minus 1 over 8t. Remember, the derivative of ln of t is 1 over t. All right, so this is a good start. Now what I can do is I can go ahead and plug into my formula. So the, the function, the arc length function represented by this curve is going to be the integral 
from a to x. So a this time is 1. They have to give you the starting point, so 1. And then x is going to be my variable. This is a function of x that we're creating. Here's where the input is for the function. It's the top bound of this integral. This tells you where to stop finding the arc length, starting at 1. And I have the integral of the uh, square root of 1 plus. What is the derivative? With respect to t, I found it. It's 2t minus 1 over 8t. And then you have to square it, just like those other two formulas, dt. And then again, the challenge is just, can you simplify this? Can you make the integral look nice enough so you can integrate what's going on in here? And right now, it's not looking nice. So we have to do some kind of, some kind of magic algebra to make this fixed. So let's start working at it. We have the integral from 1 to x. And we just need to start simplifying this. So this is 1. Again, I'm going to do FOIL on this, just like I did FOIL over here. OK, and I'm not going to write out that, that step this time. You can on your own paper if you want. But I'm going to just go ahead and do it. This is 4t squared. This one times itself. For the middle term, what you're going to get is t and t cancel if you multiply these together. And 2 over 8 is 1 fourth. And you're going to get two of these. So it's minus. 2 over 4. And then the t is cancel each time. So we have that. And then what I'm going to get is this last term times itself, which is plus 1 over 64 t squared dt. So this is what I'm looking at so far. Now what I need to do is simplify this even further. So what I'll do is I'll come down here and see if I can combine like terms at all. So I see a 1 and a minus 1 half. So what I could write this as, it's 4t squared plus 1 half plus 1 over 64t squared dt. So I notice at this stage that I have an expression in the radical that's three different terms. So there's, there's three terms in here. Usually, that's a giveaway that maybe I can re-express this as a perfect square, just like I did over here. So what would I need my first term to be to have a perfect square? Well, you just take the square root of this. The square root of 2t squared is, or 4t squared, sorry, square root of 4t squared is 2t. And then to complete the perfect square, what I would need is I would need um, this. The square root of this would be the, the second term. So this would be, they're all pluses. I have plus for all the terms. So there would be a plus here. And then the square root of this would be 1 over 8t. And then we're going to write squared. So does that work? Well, I've just verified that the first and the last one do work. 2 over 8 is 1 fourth. And if you, you have to, when you FOIL, you have two of them. So together, that would make a positive 1 half. So this actually checks out. This is correct. So luckily, the inside of here becomes a perfect square which then I can cancel with the radical. So this is the integral from 1 to x. A radical and a square cancel, and you just get 2t plus 1 over 8t. And that's great, because now I can actually integrate that. So that means that this is t squared if I integrate this. And then how do I integrate that? I have a constant 1 over 8 ln of absolute value of t. And I need to plug in my bounds. This is a definite integral. It goes from x to 1. So then my function for the arc length is going to be, I plug in an x. That's x squared plus 1 over 8 x. I don't really need this absolute value bar because I know that um, my values of x are going to be greater than 1 that I plug in, or 1, um, which is valid for the log function. So I can just write that as x minus. So I plugged in x. I need to also plug in a 1. So if I plug in 1, I get 1 squared is 1. And then ln of 1, remember, that's 0. So the arc length function, if I combine, um, and actually, I don't really have anything to combine, do I? I just have x squared plus 1 over 8 ln of x minus 1. This is a function that will tell you what the arc length is if you give me any, any x. And let's, let's do that. Let's say, let me give you an example here the length of this curve 
from the point one one, um, and then we'll say we'll go to when the x coordinate is three. So to go from one one to three three, or three f of three, all you need to do now is you don't do some complicated problem. You plug in three into this function. So if you plug in three, you get nine plus one eighth ln of three minus one, which is eight plus one eighth ln of three. So this is the distance on this curve between 1, 1, and then when x equals 3. And you can see how useful this is now, because if I want from 1 to 4 or 1 to 10, I just all I do is I plug in that number into this function um, to get that exact value. All right, so I encourage you to try many different examples of arc length. The, the difficult part always comes in when you've plugged everything into the radical. Um, because there's a couple scenarios and a couple different types of problems you're going to have to practice where you simplify this expression here enough so that you're eventually able to integrate it. So I would practice a couple different examples of these to get used to all the different tricks that you're going to need to know. And the most common one I went over here in the video is that you need to turn this into some kind of perfect square. So then that square will cancel with the radical and you're left with something that's really nice to integrate. Okay, um, until next time. Uh, please reach out if you have any questions, and have a nice day. Bye.